bit of poison on my blade, and let's go! Greedfall is one of those games where you have party members join you, and they say the same things over and over again. They chatter during fights, and one character, Vasco, says, A bit of poison on my blade, and let's go! Every single time a fight starts. Every single time. You see some monsters, you get ready to do a fight with them, and then you hear, A bit of poison on my blade, and let's go! Yeah, so that's that's what Greedfall is. That's the entire point of the game. The entire point of the game is to find monsters so that Vasco, the ship's captain, can say, A bit of poison on my blade and let's go! See, this is Greedfall. It's an action RPG from Spiders. That's all you need to know. It's a very Spiders game. Now, that is going to turn some of you off, quite rightly, and that is going to turn some of you on, quite rightly. They're a divisive studio. They make very particular experiences. Uh, to give you a bit, if you've not heard of Spiders, I'll give you a bit more of a clue to go on. It's published by Focus Home Interactive. Are you with me now? Focus Home Interactive, really one of the last few true mid-tier game publishers out there. Focus has earned a lot of praise, quite rightly, I think, for producing robust in terms of content. Maybe not in terms of technical capability or stability, but in terms of content, robust, complete packages that provide the kind of experiences that we used to, I, I guess we could say we take it for granted now, that we used to take for granted from mainstream games, from so-called AAA publishers, but, you know, they don't do those games anymore. So if you want a good old honest action RPG that hasn't been turned into a, a loot-fueled, microtransaction-riddled piece of crap, unfinished piece of crap, then Focus Home Interactive is a place to look. You know, they did Vampire, um... They did A Plague Tale, which was a, a, a wonderful story-led experience. It's one of my favourite games this year. And they've done Greedful. They do the Spider stuff. And this this one is really no different from the other action RPGs that they're known for. You are an invader in another country, basically, in this game. A bit of poison on my blade! Let's go! <laughs> Every time! Sorry, did it again. Um, where was I? All right, yeah. Uh, so you're basically a colonialist. The overall theme of this game is not going to sit well with some people. Um, the whole idea is you are a legate. You've, you've come to this new world where the people who are already living there are basically sidelined for these highfalutin city types that are building on their land. You know what colonialism is like. And there is some criticism of the practice in this game. It's shown that the people you work for and the, the other nations you work alongside uh, could be pretty ruthless, ruthless and shitty about it. Uh, there is one particular faction that's a very uh, strongly religious faction bringing their beliefs to this new world and their total dicks with it. But even so, I can fully understand and respect the overall theme of this game, the, the general premise, not sitting well with some people. Some people don't want to cuddle up with that kind of stuff. There are some scenes that are quite abhorrent, and they're supposed to be abhorrent. You know, a, a, an inquisitor strangling someone in the street for not praying to his gods. But then your protagonist is just, oh, that is bad. Yeah, that is bad. I wag my finger. I'll go on Twitter and say thoughts and prayers and then not do anything. But you know what? At least the game is actually talking about these kinds of themes. You don't see this stuff brought up in other more mainstream games. In some mainstream games, you see them more or less prop up this kind of colonialist stuff. They're just not overt about it in any way, shape or form. And that way they get to sideline and sweep it under the rug and say that their games aren't political. But within the confines of a fantastical universe, Greedful is, at least in its own sometimes stumbling way, is actually talking about it. And that may be a function again of that status that these games have as mid-tier titles. Spiders will talk about things and have themes and ideas of its own. They're not always communicated in the best of ways, but they try. As for the game itself, it's fine. 
not my favourite Spiders developed game. It's just not exactly an action-packed experience. A lot of the missions, certainly a lot of the quests I've encountered over my five plus hours in the game involved running to a place, talking to some chump, running to another place, talking to some chump, running back to the other place, talk to a chump run to a place, talk to a chump. And a lot of action RPGs have that kind of stuff, but there's normally a lot of combat and engrossing stuff to explore along the way to break it up, and Greedfall is just more direct about it. So there's a lot more running back and forth without much to break it up. There are some impressively dense cities in the game, with lots of alleys and lots of boxes to open with crafting components and ammo and gold. And there are a few fights scattered here and there, the occasional side quest to find. The more open areas of the game do not have a huge number of combat encounters in them, and combat itself is a fairly stodgy affair. I found it slow paced and annoying with the constant need to break through enemy armor. And I didn't find the weapon switching all that responsive. You can switch weapons on the fly which can be useful for breaking through armor and then switching to something else to tear through the flesh but it's just not a fluid affair it doesn't feel like you can elegantly do that like switch through weapons or parry or dodge attacks quite unlike another focus home interactive game that i can't yet talk about of note is a tactical menu you can press a button to pause the action and use that pause to get more detailed information on enemies or access a full suite of abilities and inventory items and options that you have haven't got mapped to your real-time buttons. So you can be equipped with multiple weapons, you can also uh, get a gun for some ranged combat, you map that to a button, you'll just uh, fire without the need for aiming yourself or anything. But that, despite the lack of much interaction needed from you as a player, I always found that quite satisfying to just pull back a bit and then just pachoo, pachoo. I don't know what it is about the gun in Greedful, but I really like using it, even though it's just a button press. Character unlocks feel really slow as well. Um, there are multiple skill trees and you only get points for some of them at uh, drip fed intervals. Leveling up doesn't get you a point for each tree. They're staggered out throughout the leveling process. And that wouldn't be a problem if the game didn't constantly remind you of things you can't do. If you don't have the lock picking skill, for example, you're gonna get annoyed by a lot of locked chests if you don't have science ability. The game will tell you fairly often that you're going to have a harder time with some missions because you can't make sleeping pills to knock out guards and stuff. Still, quite a few quests can be solved in a number of different ways. It's somewhat similar to Fallout games in that regard. If you can't pick a lock, maybe you've got some points in charisma, maybe you can talk your way through a situation. And if you can't pick a locked door or if you can't talk to someone to get what you need, then there's often the way less satisfying option but the more direct option to use brute force. Now, an RPG can often live or die based on how engrossing, how interesting the game's world is, and this is where Greedfall really trips up for me. I just kind of don't care about Greedfall's world and characters and history or anything. So much of it is generic fantasy world stuff. So that even though there are some interesting themes being explored, where they're being explored just isn't interesting, it's kind of trite. The game just doesn't have a lot of personality. It's a factory standard fantasy world, so the fact you are running around talking to chumps and getting into diplomatic kerfuffles only adds to the overall dryness of the affair. I don't think the visual style helps much either, it's a very muted colour scheme this game has and character costumes and architecture is all so cookie cutter. But there is one exception, hats. Greedful has quite an array of fancy hats for you to wear and they're all quite dapper. Overall the game is simply fine. Greedful is fine. If you want to run around talking to chumps, hitting the occasional monster, picking up all manner of loot, picking up loads of swords and hammers, then Greedful will probably keep you occupied for a weekend or so. As for me, I think this is one of those games I'm just not going to go back to now that I've played some of it and done this video. There is a lot coming out that is vying for attention right now and, you know, this came out at the same time as Blasphemous and Blasphemous was the game that had most of my attention. And as I speak right now, I've got Borderlands download, Borderlands 3 downloaded on my system and I'm gonna go do that now. 
So I just don't know if I'm going to have the time to come back to Greedfall. And if Greedfall was doing something a bit more spectacular, if it was a bit more action-packed, then I'd probably be more inclined to make time. But while the game was okay, while it took up a few hours of my life, it didn't enthrall me. It didn't fully entertain me. And that's about it. So I'll just wrap up. Oh, wait, a bit of poison on my blade and let's go! <laughs> Ho 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 